Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Oracle Open World 2015. Brought to you by Oracle. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live for day four coverage, day three, day zero's on Monday. Um, this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, we start to signal noise. The Cube is powered by SiliconANGLE Media, which is siliconangle.com publishing, siliconangle.tv, The Cube, Web TV, and of course, wikibon.com research. And we are on Howard Street where it's closed down for 60,000 attendees at Oracle Open World. We just heard the, the post keynote coverage here. We got the keynote from Dave Donatelli. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante, Stu Miniman, and Brian Casey, all analysts from wikibon.com. Dave, good to see you. First take on Dave Donatelli's first keynote as an Oracle executive EVP reporting to Mark Hurd, really has the DNA from formerly HP, formerly EMC, really laid out a bold statement that the end of the era is here. It's a big picture phrase, and then drilled down with speeds and feeds. We had Juan, then we saw John Fowler, really going into the, the meat, meat on the bone. Dave, your take, Dave Donatelli's first keynote. Well, you know, it's interesting, Dave Donatelli said, I've been there before, I was basically alluding to the fact that he was at EMC for a number of years, and HP, he's seen mergers, he talked about a number of companies that have died. I want to step back, John, and just point out that when, when Oracle bought Sun, I would say, at, I said at the time, it was one of the best acquisitions in the history of the computer industry. I'd put it right up there, well, maybe behind VMware, and perhaps right up there with IBM's acquisition of uh, PwC. What Oracle was able to do when it bought Sun, everybody thought it was going to jettison you know, the low-end hardware business, keep Java. What it did is it started on the journey of engineered systems. The interesting thing about that acquisition is Oracle was able to get back to its revenue multiples, its profit multiples pre-acquisition. So if you look at Oracle, it is, from a valuation standpoint, as valuable as it was before the acquisition. Why is that important? It's important because Oracle's a software company. So it's getting valued as a software company, but it owns hardware assets. Cisco can't do that. EMC certainly couldn't do that. HP is trading at, you know, 45 cents on the dollar. Dell, before it went private, was under a, a dollar for, for every revenue dollar that it brought in. So Oracle is a powerhouse getting software valuations, but it owns hardware. Guys, we're getting some commentary and engagement on crowd chat from Phil Dunn, who's brought up the point we were talking about but while the keynote was going on. Is it a build it yourself generation, or do you buy or build? Certainly in the tooling market we've been covering here in theCUBE for multiple days, people will build their own tools, but will people build their own platforms? Uh, and where's the competitive advantage? And he also comments, as he talks to a lot of Oracle customers, he says for the hundreds of customers he meets every year, Customers are tired of being integrated and don't have the R&D to acquire, assemble, and keep the stack running efficiently. That's why the engineered systems is booming. Thoughts, Stu, Brian, start with you, Stu. Yeah, so John, you know, absolutely we agree in the, the movement of systems. Uh, Wikibon was very early talking about converged infrastructure, and if you look at how hybrid clouds are coming today, you know, I want to build that stack, and customers have told us many times, I'd like to kind of have the same management, I'd like to have the same operational model, both what I do on-prem and what I do in the cloud. I mean, Oracle takes that to the extreme. They have the full stack from the silicon all the way up to the application. They want to really control it, and they can really hyper-optimize it. They're not the only when hyper optimizing it, they would say, people would say that you know Amazon is a commodity. Amazon hyper optimizes. They know their applications. They move forward, and you know that we said it's kind of the continuation of the stack wars that's going on. It's a big ecosystem here at this show, John. Been talking them all week, and you know th th there's a good battle for kind of Oracle versus everybody else. Brian, obviously this is the, the engine of innovation. John Fowler, Dave Donatelli. It's the it's in the engine room. It's the speeds and feeds, but really it's power in the applications. ERP, CRM, HCM, and then a slew of ISV or building solutions. The past layer is critical there. Is this relevant? Does it all hang together? Is it just the same stuff that Microsoft's been doing and VMware's been touting? Does this hang together? Well, I mean, they made a lot of bold statements this week. Uh, you know, a lot of the industry is saying software is eating the world. Oracle's kind of zigging when everybody else is zagging, saying we're doing software to hardware, chip to, you know, chip to application. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if the new application developers buy into that model or if this is really just a great chance for traditional Oracle people to move to the cloud. Dave. I think the other thing you got to remember too is a $2 trillion business, Oracle's got 40 billion of it. So you can look at that as half full or half empty. The good news for Oracle is there's a ton of upside. The flip side of that is there's a lot of places where Oracle doesn't do business and those horizontal players you know, still have opportunities. 
they, we had the uh, opening keynote, Golden State Warriors were on there, and it was a sports metaphor. Obviously, they won the thing that had won the championship last year, the big uh, event last night. But it really is sports takes the IT approach now, managing your team, managing your company, managing your fan experience. That's an IT culture now. You had made a comment on the build versus buy, as Scott McNeely's quote, you're either a car builder or a car dealer. You really can't be both. Maybe you can. What's your thoughts? Well, I mean, you're right. You want to be a, you know, a car maker. Oracle clearly wants to be a car maker. Now, in the case of you know Scott McNeely, that didn't really work out that well, right? Mm -hmm. Dell was the, the example of the car dealer, but at the same time, you know, look at what Dell's doing. So both models can work. Car dealers can make a lot of money, but the real big dollars, the barons of industry are the car makers, and that's what Oracle wants yeah, to do. Yeah, I mean, to, just to comment on that, I mean, Oracle has one of the crown jewels in IT. They've got an application that is super sticky out there. You know, customers aren't just going to leave it. The migration costs are so high, and, you know, this, this is what runs customers' businesses. When we talk about why do I buy infrastructure or why do I even do applications, it's about business outcomes, and Oracle's great at doing that. Guys, they have to power a lot of applications on top of it. Obviously, the database is core in memory. Memory. Back to the car analogy, we saw, and then Dave Donatelli's comment about the end of an era, EMC, IBM, and all those guys kind of fumbling. And is, is Oracle trying to position this as the Tesla? What Tesla did to the automotive industry, a whole new car, whole new engine, whole new way of doing things. Is Oracle kind of the Tesla of the, of the IT? Well, to me, the, the, the issue is, the, the bottom line is cloud. Everybody knows that homogeneity accelerates cloud. The problem is it's hard to do homogeneity unless you own the application stack and that's Oracle's unique advantage. So yes, in a way they are. If Oracle can win this platform, they have a broad set of Oracle on Oracle. If they go beyond the red stack, in the final two minutes we have here, I want to get your thoughts. If they go beyond the red stack and then can win the ISV explosion of apps in this new modern era, can they take winner take all, winner take most share in cloud? Thoughts. Well, to, to me the one, so a lot of bold statements about PaaS and, and, and SaaS. The one thing that might worry me if I'm an Oracle executive is you've got CIOs coming on stage saying, those applications are no longer business differentiated. They're a commodity to my business. The things that are going to differentiate my business, I'm building my own platforms for those. So mm -hmm. that's got to concern Oracle a little bit in terms of their platform strategy. Stu, final comments, we have a few seconds left. Anything you want to share? Yeah, so, uh, you know, it, it's great to see, you know, strong executive team, uh, as, as Dave mentioned, you know, the piece of Oracle coming together. Uh, the, the enterprise has been a little slow to get to the cloud, and Oracle's intersecting it right at the right time to be ready for this next battle. Okay, final comments from you. This, with the crowd captain on Twitter was talking about the management team wars, how the big acquisitions, the big consolidations, the team with the best management team will win. You're seeing Oracle stacking the deck. Sean Price, new executive. You've got Dave Donatelli. Obviously, Dell just acquired all the EMC talent, is this a new normal? Well, Oracle's consolidating from a position of strength, and it's going to be there for quite a long time, and um, you know, it's got a ways to go before it can go outside of that narrow value proposition. And this is the queue. We are live on Howard Street. This is the post-keynote, post-game wrap-up, as we like to say. Go to siliconangle.com. That's our publishing. Go to siliconangle.tv. That's where all the videos are. Go to wikibond.com. That's our research team of SiliconANGLE Media. And go to crowdpages.co slash OOW15. We're aggregating all the social content, the conversations that we are aggregating with our technology, and also all the videos that we're curating there here from this show, Oracle Open World 15, crowdpages.co slash OOW15, and go to crowdchat.net OOW15, join the conversation. This is theCUBE live for exclusive coverage of Oracle Open World here on Howard Street. We'll be right back with more interviews continuing here on Wednesday, day four of theCUBE. We'll be right back with more after this short break.